How did you first become familiar with Mark Rothko? I was first presented with Mark Rothko when my art teacher told me that my art style would match up almost perfectly with him, but I became to know him better as a painter whenever I reached a point in my life where Mark Rothko had where he wasn't sure of what was going to happen or what was going to come to, come to be of his life. And that's really whenever I became familiar with him. So is there any connection between the way you work and the way he worked? Uh, Mark Rothko would use a very large scale canvas and he'd uh, put a wash of paint over it, which is just pretty much paint that's diluted with water. And it would go on and add layer on top of layer, which would, in essence, create an endless variation of colors. And I kind of came to pick up that style after I really saw how much it meant and how much different variation there was. That no matter how similar your paintings are, that no two are exactly the same because of the color differentiation. So... In the play Red, which is obviously about Mark Rothko's life, what was it like for you? When I went into the play Red, I knew a little bit about Mark Rothko, but I didn't know as much as I do now. I wasn't as knowledgeable about him as I am now. I know way more about him. But that's when it really hit home for me, how much like he dedicated his life to painting. Like He'd spend hours at a time in the studio. He didn't have friends. He like made sure that everything was perfect for him to work and I mean I'm not saying that I don't have friends or anything but that's when it hit home for me that he was so dedicated to his artwork that I saw that that's what you had to be to know yourself and to be a truly good artist and I mean at that point I also saw the struggles that he went through in life and that's when I personally was having struggles and I saw that if you work hard enough you can avoid them and show people them through your artwork. So when you were overcoming things, Mark Rothko was also overcoming things? Mark Rothko reached a part in his life and his most noted specific saying that whenever the darkness overcomes the light, like whenever there's almost no hope left, and I think that's, that's where I was at in my life. That's why everything really, really hit home for me. How would you describe his personality? Like, why did he paint the way he did? Uh, like I said, he had a point in his life where everything was dark, where nothing made sense, and all his paintings are are attributed to that. You can see that each painting has dark and each painting has light, but at no point in... His names were kind of odd for his projects uh, and, and artworks. Uh, could you explain why that was? Mark Rothko did not name any of his paintings besides with numbers. Each painting was, for example, like number eight or number 64. And uh, that's because Mark Rothko felt that if a painting was named, then it would have, like, the, it would give the viewer an idea of what it was supposed to be like. He felt that if you were able to come to what the painting was supposed to mean, then it would mean so much more to you. And, uh, He's noted with saying people break down and cry in front of my paintings. And that was in uh, relation to the color mixtures and his color relationship that he has. But he says that if the colors are the only thing that truly make you cry, then you're missing the entire point of the painting, which shows that he does have an idea of what they're supposed to be, but he doesn't want to come out and directly tell you that he's of course, you're going to come to terms not exactly with, with Mark Rothko's thinking when he was painting it, but he'll show you what he was feeling. Colors show you so much more than 